Not to spoil the rest of this video, but one of the points I'm going to make is that a good way to get views is to make people angry. And because I'm on YouTube, I need views. So I've prepared a short list of unpopular opinions in order to rile people up so they watch my videos. <clears throat> hot dogs are better than hamburgers. Rainy weather is better than hot weather. Quentin Tarantino is a bad director and a bad person. Twitter is better than Instagram. 2D animation is prettier than 3D animation. Fat Pikachu is way cuter than Skinny Pikachu. And songs that fade out are stupid and they don't know how to end correctly. And now we just wait for the views to roll in. Hello everyone, welcome back to my commentary channel. I'm very grateful you're here. Today we're going to be talking about TikTok cringe, and not the kind you usually hear about, like cosplayers or furries or anything like that. No, today we're talking about real cringe. Acting edgy for views. The tactic we're going to be covering today is called rage baiting. It's a method used to incite a reaction, which usually comes in the form of comments and views. For example, if I posted a video called All Dogs Are Assholes, I would receive a lot of comments of people defending dogs, and rightfully so. Algorithms like the ones YouTube and TikTok use would see that video getting a lot of comments and say, wow, this video is promoting a lot of engagement. So then they would boost that video to perform better, which would only get me more comments and views, which would end up promoting the video more. I have chosen three topics for us to look at today, each one more infuriating than the last. And I'm going to use these three examples to explain to you how they use rage baiting as a tactic in order to grow their own edgy audience. But before we begin, I am obligated to remind you to please like this video and subscribe if you haven't. It helps me and YouTube, so I would appreciate that. Without further ado, let's talk about some upsetting topics. I promise this video won't be all sad. The first example, Feelin' Mix 2.0. If you've used TikTok before, you've probably run into this guy before, whether it's his own videos or someone making fun of him. What he does is he wears a lab coat and he does a stupid dance over a very provocative statement. I'm a shooter, I'm a shooter, cut blocks come around with the boo gun. I'm a shooter, I'm a shooter, cut blocks come around with the boo gun. I'm a shooter, I'm a shooter, cut blocks come around with the boo gun. All of his videos include the hashtag not a doctor in them. And it's like, yeah, buddy, that's okay. I could assume that you weren't a medical professional. So his videos are supposed to be provoking. He posts about trending topics that have a lot of debate around them and his dance-slash-expression combo almost look like he's constantly mocking people. And I know that he's only making these videos to provoke a response from people because if you try to find what he actually believes in, it's a little hard. And the reason that is unclear is because he doesn't really seem to have a stance on anything. He makes these videos making fun of Democrats, Republicans, men, women, progressive ideas, and conservative ones. It almost seems like he's trying to get a rise out of every corner of the map. And though his entire thing is insanely repetitive, it's TikTok, which means that it wound up being successful. If you look at the comment section of any of his videos, there is always a pretty heated argument going down. And all of those comments just tell TikTok that this guy's videos are really vibing with everyone, so they end up pushing that video to more people's feeds. So by inciting arguments from both sides of the debate, he is able to profit no matter what the video is about. Personally, I can't imagine building a career off of this. It sounds deeply uneventful, and no amount of money or views could ever convince me to do what this man does. But as I said, Dr. Dance here doesn't take a stance on anything. His method of rage baiting doesn't really take a stance on any topic, and it could apply to anyone. So now let's take a look at how rage baiting works when a creator is targeting a specific group of people. The second example we're talking about is Good Gosh Renfit. Don't let the introspective profile picture fool you. The only impressive thing about this guy's videos is the camera quality. This man's content feels extremely like 2016 Instagram comedy in that it plays off of stereotypes and isn't funny. Here is the big video that 
blasted him to fame. So he better accept my OnlyFans and my 40 plus body count. Exactly, girl. If he can't accept my ran through dirty Arby sandwich pussy whore ass, then he's not a real man. <laughs> Since we're dumb bitches, all we have to say is a man with preferences is, is misogynistic. misogynistic. <laughs> How do you, as like a grown man, just post this? Like, what has to be going on in your brain to be like, this is good? Obviously, this portrayal offended a lot of women. He's generalizing women as thoughts and making comments on their vaginas and body count, and he's also adding a racial element by throwing in the stereotypes of hot chips and headwear. But if you look at his comment section, there are thousands of men commenting, so true, King, or like, finally, someone brave enough to say it like it is. And of course, whenever women point out how offensive and derogatory his comments are, those same men show up to defend him saying, it's just a joke, or learn how to take a joke. And of course, since this format blew up for him, this is just all he does now. <gasps> Stephanie, come look at this fat bitch. Oh my God, what is she? <laughs> She's so big. <laughs> Wait, let me comment, let me comment. Go you girl, you look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know what comedy is. Maybe this is funny and I'm just dead inside. I really don't think that's it though. And while I was looking at his profile, I scrolled back to try to see how long he'd been doing this. And I found this gem. So the guy who's making fun of women and saying that women can't take a joke is making jokes about dog fucking? Cool, I guess. Glad to know where you stand on that one. So this form of rage baiting is extremely effective because it's radicalizing one side of the argument to staunchly defend him while provoking the other side with every single video he posts. I have a nagging feeling that he's going to continue making these misogynistic posts because they're doing really well. Because some of his earlier jokes were also, you know, homophobic, surprise, surprise, I don't understand why he thinks making fun of women is going to end up well for him. This is a side note, but I don't understand why men think making fun of women is going to not haunt them. If you're a straight guy and you like women, why does making fun of them seem like a productive thing to do? Like, sure, you got a bunch of teenage boys laughing at you and commenting on your videos, but, like, is that your end goal there, or, like, what? So that's another example of someone who is making content for a core audience that offends a different type of people. It causes people to draw lines in the sand and defend their stances, which only drives up that sweet, sweet engagement. But now we need to talk about something a little bigger than just an edgy creator like Dr. Dance or Mr. I Hate Women. No, we need to talk about an edgy movement. I'm talking about the super straights. Now I know some of you want me to explain to you what a super straight is, but to be honest with you, I need to be careful about this one because this is not the first time I've talked about super straights, just not on this channel. And this is not because I'm afraid of offending them, because their movement is offensive and it's based around hurting other people. Fuck them. But a few days ago, I posted a video on my TikTok account at Midnight Jenga. Follow it if you want. I'm funny there sometimes. And I made a joke about the super straight movement. What I didn't know is that they have a Discord where they highlight videos made about them and then they go target and harass them. I had thousands of people raid my video and leave death threats and harmful comments, and they mass reported it so much that TikTok eventually took down that video. And you might be wondering, Duncan, what did you say that warranted death threats? And here's that video. Super straight? More like stupid straight. Also, your flag is the color scheme of Grinder. I don't think you meant for that to happen, but sucks to suck. No, of course I don't regret that. But in all transparency, 
I'd like to avoid further death threats if I can. That's why I didn't include the words super straight in this title in case they search by keywords. That's also why I saved this topic for the very end, so hopefully people leave the video before they get here. But alright, let's define what a super straight is. Super straight is defined by being so heterosexual that you are only attracted to people born as the opposite gender, which excludes trans people. And you might be saying, well, Duncan, that sounds more like a preference than a sexuality. To which I'd reply, yes, you are smarter than anyone in that movement. You are allowed to have a preference. You don't have to date trans people. There's no gun to your head making you do that. But saying you wouldn't date someone based on the circumstances of their birth is offensive. Super straights are using modern gender politics to shield themselves and their transphobia. If you try to point out how harmful their rhetoric is, they will hit you with the are you discriminating me for my sexuality? Or I thought you were supposed to be supportive of all sexualities. Ignoring the fact that what they're talking about is not a sexuality. They're trying to claim a space in LGBT groups despite mocking them. They even made a flag like I mentioned in my video. It's supposed to match the color scheme of Pornhub, the orange and black sort of motif. I don't know how they explain away that one, but to me, that's just further evidence that it's a joke. A joke that people are taking way too seriously. The reason this is coming up in a video about rage baiting is because clearly, that's what this is. Nobody is oppressing straight people. There is no discrimination against heterosexuality. There is no good reason for this to be a movement people fall behind besides provoking them. I am super straight. Super straight is a new sexual orientation. It means you would date the opposite gender, but not if they were trans. This is not the same thing as transphobic, just like how gay men that only date men aren't sexist to women. The real reason people are pushing so hard for this to be a thing is because clearly it's upsetting a lot of people. And to these super straights, that's validation or attention or something. Let's try to put ourselves in their shoes for a second. Oh, God. If I was a young kid, and I hated trans people, and then I did something that made trans people upset, I would keep doing that thing. If I'm so desperate for attention or validation, and even in the form of an argument, I would do... Well, not me, because, like, I'm a good person, but, like, these people would do those things in order to get that response. And this is where rage baiting gets a little more complex, because it's not an internet thing. It's a kid thing. Remember back in elementary school where the class bully would put dirt in your hair or push you around or spread rumors about you? Usually kids don't do that because they have intense hatred in their heart for you. They do it because a reaction is what they're looking for. They're trying to elicit a response. That's just a developmental thing young children go through. It's a cry for attention. And as TikTok becomes more mainstream, that behavior is going to start popping up in spaces like this. And right now it comes in the form of people changing their profiles to the orange black flag or adding those stupid emojis to their bio because it makes other people mad. Larger creators might be embracing the super straight mentality for views and engagement like those others I mentioned, but a lot of the death threats I received came from accounts with no videos and single digit followers. At the ground level, people are embracing this ideology because they connect to it on some level and they see how other people react to it. Personally, I'm heartbroken to see that transphobia is still alive and strong today. But also, I'm kind of glad that they're labeling themselves now, because now I know who to avoid at all costs. So there you have it. Three examples of how being offensive and edgy can turn into profit, whether that's views, engagement, or just validation in general. So what can we learn from all of this? It's really hard for me to say, because in most situations, rage baiting is pretty unanimously a negative thing. It's used by Dr. Dance here to offend people of all groups in order for his account to grow. It's used by Mr. Misogynist here to dig his feet in and build a supportive base while making fun of women for some reason. And super straights, there's not any good reason for that. 
I, I can't think of one positive thing that comes from the super straight movement. It's just all trash. I guess if there's anything I want you to walk away from this video with, it's the knowledge of how to spot rage baiting in the future. If you stumble across a video that offends you or upsets you, maybe it's better to not engage with it or leave a comment or watch it in any way. Maybe it's better just to ignore it and move on. And I know that's hard to do, but if algorithms are going to run the way we operate online, maybe we need to learn how to play that game and protect ourselves and avoid supporting people like that. And I hate to say this, but by making this video, I've supported those people because I had to search their usernames and I had to click their profile and watch their videos in order to know which ones to download. And to TikTok, that all translates into engagement, which promotes those accounts more. So I've already shot myself in the foot here because I'm telling you not to support people that I just supported. Not intentionally, but like, oh, I feel terrible about myself. <laughs> But hopefully now all of you can go forward with this knowledge of how to navigate these situations online and to avoid the traps set by rage baiting. Oh, and if you know someone who identifies as super straight, do me a favor and kick them in the dick. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video to the very end. I can't tell you how much that supports me. I'll leave some more videos on screen for you to watch, and I will leave my social medias here in case you want to see more of me outside of YouTube. I hope things are going well for you. Please continue to take care of yourself and others, because you deserve it. I will see you guys back here for the next video. Take care. I love you lots. Bye.